Thank you, Jenny. All right. Okay, Remnants, can you hear me? Okay? Yes. Good, good. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, today, we're going over to the, 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 uh, the, the message. I was going to try to put the message in the background here of my virtual background. I tried it. Um, I mean, the PPT and pictures, but it, was, it, was, it wasn't working very well. So I'm going to stick with the PPT. Um, you can pin my video if you want to. There's an option to pin my video on the PPT so you can just see me as I speak to you guys. Um, but it's up to you guys. Okay, so today's message, we're going to talk about idols, right? Um, it's the second state of the non-believer. We're going through the basic gospel message. Many of you guys have already heard this message many, many times. Um, but I do want to go through it. And I want you guys to think about, uh, because you're exposed to so much culture, um, you guys understand so many things that your parents don't understand. Um, you guys are a part of a culture that um, your parents um, are not a part of fully. Um, your parents are probably just getting used to using their smartphones. Um, when, I was, when we were your age, we were on pagers. You probably don't know what pagers are called beep beeps beep beep yeah i know you can't imagine that but um there were no phones like cell phones were like you know when that when the nokia came out it was like this huge thing like wow i can call someone but now you got everything in your phone but what i'm trying to say is the the idols today in this age the fundamental root point is the same satan's strategy satan's strategy is the same but his actual method upon where how he does that um, is becoming so much more, um, you know, diverse, okay? So I just want you guys to think, keep that in mind as, as we go through the message today, okay? So just a little bit of review. God made man to be with him. Man was happy and had no sin. And what I want to share with you on this one is, um, you know, just to, re just to re review that God... When he created us, he wanted us to be with him. And God, you can't see God, right? You can't see him because he's spirit. And that God, he wants you to enjoy that relationship with him. So because we're doing online worship now, I'm off, uh, you know, and we can't meet in person. Eventually, I really want to engage you guys in discussion and conversation. And about every little part of the gospel message, I want to have you guys really discuss it and think it through. Okay, God is a spiritual being. You can't see him, right? He's unseen. But the things of this world, the, his, the signs of his creation or his being are visible. And that's a little, also what we talked about before. But those, are, those things are visible. It's scientific. Um, there's actual evidence supporting the creator God of the universe. And was one picture that I like to go, that I like to show sometimes to kind of make, to jog our thinking is this picture, which came first, the chicken or the egg? For uh, atheists, this is a difficult question to answer. There is a scientific answer for this, but which came first, the chicken or the egg, guys? If the chicken came first, well, where did the chicken come from? Well, from the egg, but where did the egg come from? The chicken. Do you see the problem? For us who believe in a creator God, it's the answer is simple. I know it's really silly to do this, but silly example, but there are so many things in creation that point to God. There is scientific evidence that points to God. And many scientists and world-renowned, um, you know, um, Nobel Prize winning scientists are believers in God as well. So you have evidence of that. But the point, the most important point is that God created man in his own image. He created them, male and female. He created them to be with them in his image. He created us to enjoy everything within him. Everything that we see, everything that we do is meant to be enjoyed through him. That's what we talked about, right? Everything in creation. But something happened to this perfect creation. Uh, Satan tempted man. When did it happen in Genesis chapter 3? Satan used the serpent to tempt man. 
and said, uh, did God say that you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? Eve replies. She adds a word to God's word. She removes the word. And then he presents the lie. You're not going to die. God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes are going to be open. And you're going to be like God. Okay. So he presents the lie. And then what happened is Adam and Eve took that fruit. They wanted to be like God. They sinned, and everyone from that point in time became a sinner. And no one is righteous, not even one, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And what happened up to next week, last week's message, it's not only that we're separated from God, you belong to your father, the devil. So this is a very serious problem. And his first strategy is that to make you worship idols. Okay. Um, this is the example from last week. Um, Father, mother, you have a baby, and then daddy sinner, mommy sinner, baby sinner. He who does who is sinful is of the devil. If you are sinful, you're of the devil. You belong to your father, the devil. And that's where we are right now. So what the Satan's target is that you don't worship God. You don't enjoy God. That's how we're made to be. You enjoy other things. And if you're going to seek out God, seek out false gods gods made in images and the bible says in first corinthians don't do that because you're not just we're, we're bowing down to some image a tree or a statue or or whatever made out of a tree you're not bowing down down to idols you're bowing down to demons and i don't want you to participate with them don't do it that's what the word says i gave you this picture last week this is thailand dhammakaya is the buddhist sect that we visited and just to give you a picture of how they gather, but that's about 500,000 people um, bowing down to 1 million plus Buddha statues. This is Islam, of course. Um, that black box in the middle there, uh, it's in Mecca. And Muslims, once in their lifetime, are supposed to make a pilgrimage to this place. But all Muslims, five times a day, pray towards this box. It's kind of ironic. Muslims say they don't worship idols, but they worship, they pray toward this box. Anyone know what's in the box? Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but it is, they believe, the altar in which Abraham worshipped God. And also there's a shard, a black shard from a comet from heaven that they believe is from God that's also there in the box among other things you can look it up and you can research it but then you have Hinduism where had to have over 50 million gods one of them a god that's half human half elephant and they literally worship these things um, and of course this anyone want to guess where this is it's Korea. Yes. And they're worshiping ancestors. And this is very predominant in Korea. Still, very, very many people, not only Buddhists, but worship ancestors and call upon the spirits of ancestors to come. In this new age, this is pretty hidden. Uh, Freemasonry, we won't get into too much detail today, but eventually I want to have a deep form about Freemasons. But their ideology, they believe in what's called the Great Architect. Um, it doesn't matter which god you serve, but the god of, of it all is what's called the great architect. And the higher you go up, the more detail they give about that. But they have ceremonies in which you receive the spirit of Hiram Kibif. It's a ceremony that you receive a spirit of a dead architect or mason in the Bible, in, in Solomon's temple. He was Hiram Kibif was the one who built Solomon's temple, one of them. Um, but that's what they believe in. And of course, right there in the bottom is George Bush, George W. Bush, one of our U.S. presidents, and many U.S. presidents are Freemasons. And this is what is happening today. I mean, it's uh, the founder of the New Age movement. She was a, a sorcerer, a shaman, a fortune teller, of the Church of Scientology, and all the thing that's in the culture, Yoda even, is part of this flow, the New Age flow, and it leads to uh, what's ha very popular today is transcendental meditation. Some of you have told me that in your schools they're starting to do this. 
and it seems innocent enough at first, but the main core principle of transcendental meditation is that you're tapping into the spirit and power that's with inside of you. And that spirit and power of the universe, they'll tell you, is God. And you can be like him if you tap into it. Famous people, influential people are all part and bought into this thing because uh, it's helped help them in some way. And what happens is the greatest idol of them all and all of religion what points to is me. What you can do to attain this or that, transcendental meditations, all of its point is me. You have the power inside of you, inside of me, and it's you who can unlock that secret power. All you have to do is X, Y, and Z. It has nothing to do with God. And more and more and more, the belief in God of creation, the God of the Bible, God, God's in original intention for mankind to enjoy him more and more that is going to be some a thought that's going to be old a thought that's going to be foolish in their eyes and what's going to happen and where this came from was something called postmodernism. i'm not going to bother you too much with details because um it's a, it's a topic for another discussion but pre-modern age people were searching for truth Okay, basically what I'm trying to say is postmodernism, before postmodernism, the postmodern age, truth was something sought after. Absolute truth was real. Is there God or is there not God? There was a discussion. There is, because that's got to be one. one it's got to be absolutely true. Is there God or not God? One of them's got to be true. And there would be onward, upward enlightenment or direction towards that educationally and everything. But now in this postmodern age, you see that these, these uh, pictures, these scribbles, now, it doesn't matter what you believe in because what you believe in is absolutely true. There's no absolute truth anymore. There's no search for it in the educational system. And you can say it's liberal or whatever you want, but that's why you have all these different belief systems coming out, claiming truth. And we have to then and the, the, the line now is you have to respect their beliefs. And there's no talk of absolute truth anymore which leads to pluralism, which leads to your ideology being true, which leads, leads to so many things, confusion. In other words, you create who you want to be. You become God, in, in other words. And if, you're, if someone's against what you think, you're like, the attitude is, leave me alone. You have nothing to do with me. Let me believe what I believe. Let me do what I want. And that's what's going on in the culture and the flow of this age. Ultimately, it's going to lead to this, guys. You think it's that far away, but it's not. Elon Musk is work, working on and he's already started uh, a, a way to connect your brain to a computer. And what it's going to end up, where it's end up going is this AI age where artificial intelligence is something that's real and it's going to take part. I know I'm sorry about this ugly picture. It's a picture of a Star Trek movie, John Luke Picard, but computers and humans are going to be joined together there will be a computer right now the computer is in your phone but that phone chip eventually is going to make its way into the human body let's not look at that picture that's an ugly picture but eventually all the money right now that's being poured out into this into into investments right now is all being poured in this direction anyone with money a lot of money are all investing in what to put their brains in a computer and they're saying they want to do this because they want to live forever and how foolish is that thought just because you can send your brain to a computer does that mean you're going to live forever how are you going to send your spirit and soul to a computer it's complete ignorance and complete madness and along with this technology is going to be severe severe spiritual problems this is the idolatry of today it's it's uh, idols are also things that you see and you bow down to actual things, but the greatest idol is me. You don't need God. You can be like God. And this is all a scheme of Satan. And what's so scary is now his strategy. It'd be so great if you could see him. He's a thief. John 10, 10, he comes to steal. He 
He comes at night. He comes in black. You don't want to see him. He doesn't want you to see him, I mean. And the strategy that he's pulling over the people of the world with AI and all of this new age TM is that you can be like God. And he's behind it all. The reason why the Son of God appeared was to destroy the work of the devil. Now, if you open your eyes to the reality of what the devil is doing today, and you think about what Jesus Christ has done and apply it, he's come to destroy the work of Satan. Destroy and break his authority and stranglehold over this world. How did he do that? He came as a lamb, as a servant. He didn't come to rule. He didn't come to judge. He came to serve and give his life for you on the cross. And there's evidence, historical evidence of this. There is a historic Jesus that died on the cross. He was cut with a spear in the side of his, on his, on his side. Water and blood spilt out. He died. Medically, absolutely proven. The theory that stands today is that he didn't die all the way, which doesn't, which doesn't stand true anymore because they know with the eyewitness evidence that he had died on the cross, but he rose from the dead. There's evidence for that too. He came to destroy the work of the devil. To do what? To restore everything again. Guys, because what Jesus Christ did, now we can enjoy God. We can enjoy God daily. Okay? Whatever we do, in everything that we do, you can enjoy God. In your studies, in your, in your playing sports, even playing with your friends, meeting with your friends, you can enjoy God in everything that you do. If you understand that he's with you and the reason why he's with you. Okay? Summit time, guys. Just try this, okay? One minute, three times a day. One minute in the morning, one minute in the afternoon, one minute at night. Be a star. Take a deep breath. Stop, relax, and hold on to the covenant of Christ. Hold on to your Sunday message. Hold on to this theme. Where is idolatry in this world today? Open your eyes to see. And does it mean that, okay, I should never be on the internet, I should never be on my phone, I should never be on playing games? No, it doesn't mean that. You should play games. You should be on the internet. You, why do you need to do that? Because if you don't, everyone else that's on it, you're not going to be able to relate to them. All of it is also that you can ultimately save your field. You have to know your field too. If all of your friends are playing a certain game, you, know, you need to try it out. Or else when they ask you, hey, have you played this game? And you say no, they're going to be like, what? It's for the field as well, okay? The forum topics today are three things. Help me see Satan's work through idols. And what I mean by idols is try to go deeper, not just physical idols like religious idols, but idolatry of you or me and the flow of this age that's going in that direction. And then how can I break the power of idols in this world? Help me to have no idols but love and trust Jesus. I bless you in Jesus' name that today... Um, you guys, during forum, just really enjoy and go deeper into the message. Amen?